up, my old school soul food family? Chef Jeff is back with another video. Oh, yeah, I gotta keep on schedule here. All right, y'all, you know I'm in these vlogmas here. Day we doing vlogmas, day 14. So we got 10 more days of this, y'all. Vlogmas day 14. And the day I'm doing something I absolutely love. Most people love. I'm doing some old, old school crab cakes. And I'm going to do a deal hollandaise. I'm going to tell you why I'm going to do a hollandaise sauce with it. Even though it's classical. But the reason I'm going to make a hollandaise. Because crab cakes I use have egg whites in it. So I take the egg yolks that's left over. And I'm going to make a sauce for that. But first thing I'm going to do. I'm going to get this out the way. My egg yolks. I got some veal here. And uh... White vinegar. I'm going to get that out the way. I don't need that right now. First thing I want to do, I want to get my crab cake mix done. And I like to let it kind of sit up and let all the flavors and stuff absorb in there. And while it's doing that, I'll uh, make the uh, hollandaise. So what I use, y'all, I use real crab in my crab cake. I don't use no crab to start with a K. I use the crab to start with a C. Crab is very expensive. It depends on what brand you, what grade of crab you use. Now, I'm using lump. When I make crab cakes, I use lump. I don't use jumbo. I don't use colossal. I don't use back fin. Um, back fin, yeah. It's the same thing as lump. Back fin and lump are the same thing. I don't use the uh, claw meat. I use that maybe for gumbo and stuff like that. But this here, this crab meat here costs $26 a pound. You get jumbo lump. It can, it can vary from $34 to $40 a pound. You get Colossal, it'll be $45 to $50 a pound. I use this when I make crab cake. I do not scrimp on the crab when I don't, that, that little pink or yellow, uh, a red crab you see in the store that start with a K, that's imitation crab. I do not mess with that. I don't know what it is. I don't even know how they make it. So it's uh, some stuff come from China or whatever. But I use regular lump crab meat, which is this right here. Nice, and you can like I say, you can use jumbo lump crab, but I don't want to take forty dollar worth of crab meat and make crab cakes out of it. It just it doesn't make sense. If I'm gonna use jumbo lump, I'm gonna use it for something else like a crab salad or uh, roll it up in something. But other than that, I'm gonna use regular uh, regular lump. Oh, it's called back pan too. All right, y'all. I got that all wet. Now, all I'm going to do, y'all, is very simple. Put this together. Kind of break this up. And that's the reason I don't use jumbo lump. Because jumbo lump, you use jumbo lump. Then you break it up. And then all you got is this. So why take $40 with the crab meat and you're going to break it up anyway? But I don't try to break it up too much. So all I use, I got celery in here. And I do the celery and onions. I dice them really small. I don't mince them, but I want really small. Because when I eat my crab cakes, I don't want to be... Having a big uh, wad of celery and onions. I want it to be crab cakes. I want you to take crab. You never had crab cakes? All you taste is breading or vegetables? No. I want to taste the whole experience. So I got egg whites in here. It's going to be a binder. I got two binders in here. It's going to be egg whites and breadcrumbs. That's what's going to bind this together. But I ain't going to put a lot in there. Just enough to get it together. Put a little Worcestershire sauce in there. Let me get a big spoon here. I'm gonna put mayonnaise in here. We're gonna give it a little creaminess. Hold on, y'all. I don't wanna use this Mexican mayonnaise. Give me one second here. One second. I got the Mexican mayonnaise with the lime. I definitely don't want that one. That's one I use for my corn. Okay, I'm going to use some uh, crabs here. You can use Hellman, you can use Dukes, however you want to do it. It's good I saw that, y'all. That would have messed me up. That would have messed me up on my crab cake. Have a lime uh, taste. Okay, we're going to kind of mix this. Mix this together. Now we're going to add our brick crumb, then we're going to add our seasonings to this. A little breadcrumbs to this, not a lot because now I don't want this to be bready. I want you to taste crab meat and not bread. 
and what I, that's why I like to let it set up and let all that bread crumbs soak up all that uh, extra crab. Now I'm gonna season it up. Put a little Cavendish in there. Cavendish is not salty, y'all. A little salt and pepper, y'all. Not a lot. Gonna mix this up here. I love my cabinets in my, you know, it's good on fish, but when the crab cake, it takes it to the next level, y'all. So, and this is something people say, how do you do this? I'm gonna taste this with egg whites in it. A lot of people don't like, oh, we can't eat raw egg. I taste it. I, I, Sometimes I walk around the kitchen, they make a big bowl of egg whites, egg whites, a big bowl of crab cakes. Well, I used to work, I eat it raw. Been doing it for years, so that's how it tastes the seasoning. Pretty much perfect. I'm put a little bit more salt and pepper. And that'll do it. I'm gonna mix this up and let this kind of hang out on the side here. And when we come back, we're going to make our hollandaise sauce, which is a classical sauce. It's one of the five mother sauces. And we're going to turn it into a deal sauce. So that's it. So anyway, y'all, we'll be right back. And we'll get this hollandaise, which is going to be the sauce for this crab cake. And we'll go from there. We'll be right back. All right, y'all, we back here. Okay, like I say, we're about to make a hollandaise. Very simple. Hollandaise, people are intimidated by it. All these butter and eggs. A lot, a lot of... Uh, calories in that but it's so so good and I'm gonna use this as the top of my uh for my uh crab cake so all I'm gonna do y'all I got a little salt and pepper I'm gonna put in here I got some white vinegar here I'm gonna put a little hot water in it I'm gonna kind of mix this up and all this is y'all is the eggs left over from the Crab cakes, egg yolks. I'm gonna mix that up right there. Now I'm gonna come over to the. I got a hot water bath right here, y'all. And I'm what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna kind of thicken this up over the hot. This time now, I, you very seldom you see me use like a water bath type thing. But I don't play around with holiday because if you do this without this, you will break this or it won't come out proper. So this is the classic way of doing it over hot water bath or you can pour hot butter right in it but i'm gonna show y'all the easy way to do it where it will not separate on y'all so I, of course i got some hot water in there i don't have the bowl touching the water i just got it over the heat there and what i want to do i want to keep whisking this until uh this slightly thickens and when it's slightly thickened i got some butter here i'm gonna slowly add to this and it's gonna help it thicken even more. And this don't take long, especially this one, because I'm only using three eggs. I made it where I've had like 20, 48 eggs in there and have the bowl like this, and you gotta have it over a big water bath. I did that too. So it's something you definitely you gotta learn. Every chef has to know how to make this in the cut, color, and kitchen, because hollandaise serves a lot of purposes. Like I'm making a deal hollandaise. You can make burnt eggs, which all it is is hollandaise with tarragon in it. You can use this to make your um, oyster Rockefeller. You know, the oysters with the spinach on top. And then you put the hollandaise on top of that. You do, you can do so much with hollandaise. Like I said, it's a classical sauce in the cooking, especially in the, we call the fancy restaurants. You must know if you're a chef, it's something you must know and you must uh, know how to do on a regular basis. And I try not to whip too much air in this because I'm not trying to make a, uh, uh, my memory's having a brain cramp here, y'all. When you whip air into the egg whites, egg yolks, it'll come to me in a second here. I'm not trying to make that. I'll think of it here in a second. When you're just whipping air into the egg white. And uh, it in the egg yolks. There's a term for that too, but it's it's it's, it's on the tip of my tongue. I just can't get it out. 
So we're going to slowly whisk this. And this is slightly, when you want it slightly start to thicken, then you're going to add your butter. Now you can add your butter here now if you want to, and then sit over here and kind of thicken it up. But once I add the butter to this, I want it to kind of thicken up with the butter and not have to sit here too long and do this. Okay, you can see it's slightly thickening now. Now I'm going to slow add my butter to this. You don't want to add the butter too fast. If not, you're going you're gonna, to uh, break it. And if you break it, there's a way to bring it back. Because we've all broken holiday before. That's a given, but you gotta know how to bring it back to life. A little bit more, and you can use clarified butter. Classical, you use clarified butter, but I use the butter with the milk solids in it. See how it's going, you gotta really whisk it now. I'm gonna turn this water off. And if you don't whisk it really, really good right now, it will separate on you. See how it's sticking it up? And got the milk solids right at the end. And it's totally cooked. I'm gonna take it off of here. In fact, now, what I'm gonna do, y'all, see that this is deal. I soaked in uh, vinegar. Pull that in there. Now you got deal hollandaise, see that? Perfect. That's it. Now we're gonna move it back over here on the counter. We're gonna move it back over here. And we're gonna let that sit. And as this sit, matter of fact, I'm gonna let it sit kind of near the warm. You wanna keep this where it's warm, not hot, but warm. You don't want this to get cold on you. If not, it'll separate it. We're gonna put, I'm gonna put it, matter of fact, just sit it on top of the stove where it's warm. We're gonna come back, we're gonna form these crab cake, get them sauteed off. We're gonna hit some dill sauce with it, and we'll be ready to eat, we'll be right back. All right, y'all, we back here. Now, we're gonna form my crab cakes here. I got a little flour here on the pan, and all I'm gonna do, I got my little scoop here, a little crab cake scoop. I'm gonna just put them right here on the flour here, and then we're gonna dust them on the other side, go right in the skillet. If you was in a restaurant, depending on how you order them, appetizer or entree, you pretty much get them like this, but I like to get them uniform here. We're going to make them big here. We can get out of here, y'all. How many we can get up out of here? Maybe six. Six out of here, yep. Get a half a dozen out of here. It's absolutely perfect. Okay. Okay, now. What we're gonna do, I got my skillet heating up here. Now all we're gonna do. Come on, skillet. I like to turn them over gently. Make sure all the sides are completely has flour on them, kind of forming just like this. And we'll slowly put them in the skillet, y'all. Get them in there, we just wanna get them golden brown on both sides. And then we're gonna, I like to kind of finish them in the oven. You gotta be gentle with these, as y'all can see. I don't make them like they hard and mushy. I mean, hard and uh, with a lot of bread, bread crumbs in them. These actually have more crab than anything in it. Hold them in the flour, just like this. Okay, y'all, I'm gonna let them start browning on. When I turn them over, we'll be back and we'll go to the next step. We'll be right back. All right, y'all, we back here. Okay, y'all, see I'm flipping them over and being very gentle with them. Oh, they very, very, uh, what's the name for it? Can't think of the name for it, y'all. 
That's what you want. That's the color you want right there. Nice golden brown color. And my skillet kind of cooks unevenly. Okay, y'all, we're gonna let these cook by two or three minutes and we're gonna take them off. And I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do with them after I take them out. So we'll be right back. All right, y'all, we back. Okay, I got them out of the pan, y'all, out of the thing. Now, I like to put mine, these are not completely done. So I'm gonna put them in the oven by 15 minutes and let them get completely done out the oven. When we come back, when we come back, I'm gonna have them all plated up and put the little sauce on it. I'm gonna already have the sauce on it, everything on it. And I got some uh, tomatoes I did for another video. I'm gonna put on there too, so we're gonna try these out. So anyway, we'll be back when they're completely ready. We'll be right back. All right, y'all, we back. Look at this here. See how the hollandaise sit on there, y'all? Nice crab cake. And y'all probably seen the video. I hope I read on tomato Florentine. If not, it's coming. I think it's coming after it. But anyway, y'all got a tomato Florentine video. I'm not gonna taste those, but they're actually cold. But that's not the focus. The focus is the crab cake. You see the hollandaise, how it's set up? Let me show you here. It's still set up there. It's not broken. That's where you want your hollandaise to be. It's very simple. Y'all see how I made it? Very easy. So let's go into this crab cake here, y'all. It's still hot. You see how hot that is, y'all. Look at that. How the hollandaise sit up on top of that. Okay, going in. I love crab cake, y'all. Mmm. Wow. Hold y'all, it's hot. And it's been sitting here five minutes. It's still hot. Oh. Dylan, he don't eat crab meat, crab cake. Let me tell y'all, these are about six ounce portions of crab. It's 12 ounce crab meat, crab cakes right here. If you buy this in the restaurant, this plate minimum, depending on where you get it, $30 minimum in a regular restaurant. You go to Vegas, you're looking at 70, 75 bucks. If you eat on the strip, this plate right here, and you make it at home, I can tell y'all the crab uh, cost me $23 a pound. It costs nothing for the vegetables. So you can get all these, I make six of these for 25, 26 bucks. You can make crab cakes at home better than you can in a restaurant because it's a better quality, I'm telling you. I make crab cakes in my sleep. If I had a dollar of every crab cake I made in my life, I wouldn't be doing YouTube. I'd be a millionaire. I'd be here somewhere on the own island somewhere. So I'm up back here, y'all, and then I'm off. Mm. Let me show y'all how flaky it is. Let me cut it in half. And y'all see, that's all crab meat. There's no, not a lot of bread. You see, I didn't put a lot of bread in. That's the key. They have a lot of crab meat. I know you eating crab cakes be more breading and stuff like that. But I like my crab cakes to be crab cakes. You see how hot it is still in the middle, y'all. And I'm still eating it because I love it. Now, another thing you can do with these. All right, you can take these. I'm telling y'all, listen to what I'm about to say. Get you a hamburger bun, y'all, toast it. Put you some, you can put dill, but get you some tartar sauce or some remoulade put on there with lettuce and tomato. Put one of these crab cakes in there. Oh my God, it's the best crab cake sandwich you ever tasted. That's just another little hint. I would do a video on it, but I got so many other videos to do. But make you a crab cake sandwich. And that's a big seller where I used to work at. We couldn't keep them. They'd order them 10 at a time, crab cake sandwiches. So that's another thing you can do with them besides eating it like this. So anyway, y'all, let me close the video out. Enough talking. If you like this video, please share, please comment, please subscribe, please follow us on social media accounts, Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, Twitter, TV, Patreon, and TikTok, and OldSchoolSocial.com. Remember the hashtag 2022, helping others with a purpose. Old School Soulful. Until next time. Have a blessed old school soap day, and I'll see y'all in the next video. Vlogmas day 14 is done.